Hey, this is Dave DeVoe. Would you like to access private capital so that you can buy more properties and scale your real estate business? Then check out my brand new podcast. It's called the How to Raise Capital 101 Show. Now, the first nine episodes are a mini course on how to raise six figures in a matter of weeks and seven figures in a matter of months, even if you're starting from scratch. So you can find this new show. Again, it's called the How to Raise Capital 101 Show wherever you listen to podcasts. Or feel free to visit us at RaiseCapital101Show.com. Hey everyone, Dave here with another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. Let me ask you this. Would you consider yourself to be an introvert or an extrovert? Believe it or not, I'm kind of introverted. And I know a lot of folks think that they need to be an absolute extrovert to make it in the world, to make it especially in the world of real estate investing. But our guest today, Ashley Harwood, is a real estate professional. So she works as a real estate agent, which is typically what most people think of as a very extroverted kind of profession. But here's the cool thing. Ashley is is an introvert, and she's made it work in a very extroverted world. So why are we having her on the call? Because over the years and decades now that I've been teaching and training and coaching and helping real estate investors... I've found that a lot of real estate investors classify themselves as introverts, and they have a lot of trouble getting out, mixing and mingling, and doing extroverted type things. So we want to chat with Ashley today about that and about how she's cracked the code on being very, very successful in a very extroverted kind of profession. So Ashley, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, it's my pleasure to have you. So First of all, let's just do a quick little recap. And let me ask you this. Seeing that you are naturally introverted, how did you become interested in becoming a real estate professional in the first place? Well, when I got into real estate back in 2013, I had no idea I was an introvert. (laughs) Seriously. It just just snuck up on you and kind of caught you by surprise, did it? No idea. No clue. Um, I hadn't studied it. I hadn't really heard about it. Real estate had always been something that fascinated me, and I knew I wanted to work in that space at some point. So the timing was right in my career and my personal life nine years ago. And um, I struggled a lot more than I had to because of this. That's why I have this business now where I help people navigate this introvert extrovert thing um because so if, if you didn't realize time. until you started the profession that you were actually an introvert what was it that hits you upside the the head that made you realize that hey guess what i guess i'm not as extroverted as i thought it was about three years in i read the book quiet by susan kane okay not familiar yeah. with that book but it sounds like a good one It's a good one. It's all about introversion. It has nothing to do with business or real estate. Um, And I read that book and a bunch of light bulbs went off and I realized this is why I'm so drained all the time. This is why I'm so exhausted and anxious. Mm. There were just a lot of things that lined up and it made sense. And so I took those realizations back to my business and made some significant changes in how I was finding business. Okay, very cool. So again, you're a real estate professional. So if you don't mind, can we compare and contrast the activities before reading the book and the realization and the activities after? Would that be all right? Definitely. Yeah. So what what were things looking like before that you had you stressed out, they had you anxious, they had you feeling drained at the end of every day? It was all those things and they were not really working. Um, that That was the kicker. So The before activities, I would typical day, go to a networking breakfast in the morning, go into the office, spend two to three hours on the phone, making cold calls to expired and for sale by owners. Not fun. No. Uh, Following a script. I was very well trained, but not in the activities that I really needed. And then I would have several meetings in the afternoon, one-on-one coffee meetings with people I met networking. And then usually I would end up at a networking event in the evening as well. So I would fill my day. Now, this was the first year, year and a half 
mm-hmm. of the business. So I didn't have a lot of client work to do. Right. So I would fill my days with networking, networking, activity. networking, cold calling. Right. Yeah. It, and it was way too much. So the biggest change after reading this book and, and doing a lot of self-reflection, mm-hmm. the biggest change was stopping all the cold calling and paring down my networking events from one to three per day to one to three per week. All right. Very cool. So what did you do instead? What what replaced those activities and still filled up your pipeline with business? I didn't do a lot of replacing. Rather, it was it was strategically getting rid of things that were sucking my time and energy so that I was showing up in a much better way to the things that I was still doing. Okay. Yeah. So I, so for instance, I know that was kind of, you know, top level, but for Mm -hmm. instance, I was, I was, it was quality over quantity is where I ended up with things. So I took a list of 20 networking groups that I was loosely a part of and Mm -hmm. said, okay, I'm going to choose my top five and, and spend more time with those people and go deeper with those relationships. So that made a big difference because then the referrals started coming. So before you were kind of thinking, hey, I got to spread myself thin. I got to be all over, got to be doing all this different stuff. But the the other side of that was because you were so thin, you weren't going deep. So you were it was all superficial kind of relationships. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. Yes. Okay. So you narrowed it down to about five. Instead of going to three a day, you're going to three a week. Sounds a lot more doable. Uh, yeah. And you got rid of the cold calling. All right. So I don't know how things were going for you with the cold calling side of things, but how long did it take you to replace whatever kind of business that was generating by having this more focused approach? Or did you start doing other things in addition to that as well? I had zero business that came from cold calling. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Nothing. Yeah. It well, was yeah. My head against the wall. But you were told to do it and you and hats off to you that you did it. You cranked that out for a couple of years before you you stopped doing it. So that's tenacity, that's for sure. I think I tried here this is an embarrassing admission here Ashley. The only time I tried cold calling was when I was desperately trying to raise some money for the very first deal I needed to raise capital for. And I only made it through about 10 or 12 calls before my poor little feelings could not handle all of the rejection. So the, <laughs> the fact that you it's, did it hours on end, day after day for months, if not years, is mind boggling to me. It, it was rough. And so I did, I came up with a plan for how to build stronger relationships. One thing that I ended up adding to my plan was um, events client events. And you say client event, people think, well, I haven't had that many clients, but I would invite everyone, everyone who would possibly um, send me a referral or help me in my business in some way, or just friends, neighbors, um, and meeting people in person and spending time with them in a casual social setting was a lot more comfortable and, and natural to me. Okay, well, let's unpack that a little bit, if you don't mind, Ashley, because I love that idea. So what did it or what does? Well, no, let's go back because you had to start somewhere. What did your first client event look like? Uh, How many people did you invite to it? How did you get the word out? How many people actually showed up? And and what did that what did that look like? What did that generate for you? The first one was very cool. I rented out a an auction house. And an auction house. Okay. tours of the of the items. So it was a more upscale evening event. It was not something for the whole family. Um, more kind of wine and appetizers, and then tours of the the auction items. Uh, a lot of antiquity, art, that sort of thing. Um, I invited. Man, this was this was like seven years ago. Um, I invited about a hundred people. Okay. Again, everyone I could think of. There were probably two clients in that list, actual clients, but yeah. whatever. I just invited everyone. There were about 30 who showed up. 
Well, that's okay. Well, that's very good. Yeah. So how did you get the word out to those hundred people? Were you calling everybody, emailing everybody? Did you send out actual written invitations? What did that look like? If you recall? All of the above. Okay. I really don't like calling people. So I, I tried my best to not call them if I didn't have to, right. but Eventbrite so they could register. I could get a headcount for the caterer. Um, I sent that out via email a couple times and pushed it through to a Facebook event. Um, there were some texts follow up. If I hadn't heard from somebody, I would try texting first. And then last resort, I would call them. Okay, very good. So that sounds like a pretty pricey kind of a, an event to put on with catering and, and with the whole thing. What did that, if you don't mind sharing, what did that look like? price tag wise at that time? I don't remember exactly. I want to say it was around $2,000. Yeah, I, w- I would think so. It would it would not be a, a cheap thing to do. So 2000 bucks, you know, that's for, for a relatively new person in the business who doesn't sound like at that point you were doing a heck of a lot of business. That was a, that was a big chunk to bite off at one, at one time. Were you pretty nervous about that? I was a little nervous about it. And again, that was my first one. So going forward, I did make some changes. I chose less expensive activities and venues. We rented a movie theater one time. We did apple picking another time. And I started bringing in vendor partners to help. So my mortgage partner, who I worked with all the time, we would split the cost of things. So I, I got a little smarter as the years went on. But that first one, yeah, that was kind of pricey. Wow, that's another fantastic idea. Hold on to that thought for a sec. We'll be right back. Now, are you a real estate investor who's run out of cash or credit to grow your portfolio? Are you looking to grow your portfolio using other people's money and raising capital? Well, I want to show you how to raise six figures or more in six weeks or less at my upcoming Investor Attraction Workshop. You can get your ticket and find out all about it at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. We're going to spend a full day taking a deep dive into this roadmap that I've used to raise millions for my deals, and I've helped other people just like you cumulatively raise hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for their deals as well. So again, you can check that out at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. And as a loyal listener to the podcast, you'll get 50% off your ticket when you use the discount code PODCAST. That's right, discount code PODCAST at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. See you at the next workshop. Okay, well, let's let's take a look at the first one. What did that? So you had you had a hundred people, your dream one hundred, as they might say. You got thirty of them to actually show up to this event. It was a, your first kick in the can. It was kind of an antiqui- it, antiquities type thing, but it sounds like it was really kind of just a fun, casual kind of get together versus a a formal presentation. Or did you do some sort of a presentation there as well? No, no presentation at all. I just made sure that I said hi and thank you to everyone. And the beauty of it was most of these people didn't know each other. So the only thing that they had in common was me. So as they're mingling and making chit chat, they're talking about how they know me. Uh And so that was really cool leverage to see. I didn't have to be the one talking about myself. They all just did it amongst themselves. Very cool. Exactly. So there you are creating a little buzz around you and and your your real estate business there. That was great. And then was were you able to track what kind of business ended up coming up from that that first event? Not specifically. It was very fluid because it was more relationship building. So I right. I did end up doing business with quite a few people who were at that first event. They also came to subsequent events, so it's hard to say which one was like the one. You know? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So, so what do events look like for you now, Ashley? How often are you putting them on? It's you said you you learned how to joint venture with other people, other professionals to put on combined events. You're doing less expensive type things. What what do events look like for you now? And you know, uh, how many people are showing up? How many people are you inviting? Are you doing anything different to get them there? That sort of thing. Mm, 
I don't really do a lot of events now, so I'm I'm not selling real estate anymore. I'm on more the coaching and training side. Okay. Um, so my clients are are very different. They're now agents instead of buyers and sellers. Okay, um, makes sense. Well, let's let's go back to when you still were actively doing it. What what did they look like when you were still doing them? It was, I like to keep it fresh because a lot of times I was inviting the same people right. to multiple events. So I didn't want to just do, let's have happy hour at the bar every time, you know? So one of the coolest ones, and we had a small turnout. We had, I remember it was 12 people. Mm-hmm. We went to an escape room Okay. <laughs> and they had to break us into two groups because the escape rooms are small. They can only hold six people each. So that was really fun and memorable. And again, you're footing the bill for the entire thing. You're not charging anybody anything to attend these, these events. It's just, it's just relationship building. It's relationship building. It's thank you for being in my world. And the fact that they're coming to something and spending time with me in person means that I'm going to stick in their brain for a much longer time. Yeah, definitely. Now, the time that we're recording this, we're just kind of coming out on the other side of the whole COVID thing, what what were you doing or what were you recommending to your clients as far as events go in a virtual manner? Mm. It was tough for people to, to pivot, but, you know, Zoom is an amazing tool and I would recommend to people that they still have client events even on Zoom and uh-huh. make it fun. So one thing that people were doing was sending, not a care package, but sending something physically in the mail in advance. Okay. And that way everyone could open it and have whatever the thing was. If we're all going to paint together, you send some art supplies, or if we're all going to do a wine tasting, you send that in advance, what, whatever it is, but that way people are more engaged. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. All right. So putting on events, great idea, fantastic idea. And then I'm I'm guessing from your perspective as, as an introverted person, the nice thing about these is there's there's no pressure. You're not doing a presentation. You're just getting together with a, a bunch of people that you know uh, who don't necessarily know each other. So you're kind of the center of it. You're you're kind of the popular kid in the block because you're the yeah, you're the pivot point for everybody. And you're just going out and having fun. Are you just doing doing fun kind of things? Is is that? Yeah, and yeah. It, it, they always were fun. I still love being in person with people. Um, as an introvert, it doesn't. If it's people I know, it doesn't make me nervous, but it's still draining. Yeah. So I had to make sure that I have plenty of time to recharge my energy afterwards. Plus, it's a lot of work putting them on, getting it organized, getting people out there, especially if you're sending care packages and whatnot. That's that's a lot involved. Yeah. Right. Okay. Very good. So we got events there. Any other any other tips or strategies that you did to to move away from the cold calling and the incessant networking to to make your process more introvert friendly? Yeah. One other strategy that I used, I still use to this day is writing handwritten notes. Mm. That's it's so impactful and so easy and perfect for introverts because you just sit in your desk and write the note and you don't have to speak to anyone. It's great. So kind of like a thank you note or a nice to meet you type note and, and under what circumstances are you writing these notes and how often are you doing them? Who are you sending them to? What does what your process look like? So I actually wrote three today. Okay. I attended a, a leadership training for New England um, yesterday and I saw some people I hadn't seen in a while. Um, one of my acquaintances just got a promotion and someone else I met for the first time, someone else we had connected on Facebook, we met in person for the first time. So all of those became a note. Congratulations. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you in person. You know, very nice. So have you got some special stationery made or you just go out and buy notes from the the stationery store? What do do your notes look like? Um, I do have special stationery. Oh, great. That's, gonna... We're on video here, you guys. If you're watching this <laughs> yeah. on the on the YouTube channel, you can see it. Otherwise, I'll do my best to try and describe it to you. 
very nice. Oh yeah, so just nice and clear. It's got nice Ashley Harwood on it. That's the outside of the front cover. Is that correct? That's is, this is. It's just a card, so it doesn't open up. And ah. then on the back is my logo. Okay, cool. So you just it's it's almost like a postcard. You it's just like jot a down a note. Of, yeah, return but, address. Ah, okay, so it's a one. It's a one piece card. It's not folded. It's just the one piece you put in an envelope and yeah. off it goes. I have the folded ones too that my office uses, my KW office. So these are uh -huh. these are folded. But you prefer the other of, ones? I like the other ones. I one prefer better. the other ones, yeah, just because it's less space that I have to think of something to write. And the cardstock is thicker. It, it, you could write bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Smart, smart, smart. So are you disciplining yourself to do that on a regular basis? So, for example, I have a friend of mine that used to own a, a large insurance agency, literally with thousands of clients. And his discipline was, I think he hand wrote out 20 or 25 cards every single morning, Monday through Friday. So every year, each one of his clients got a handwritten note from him. Massive, massive discipline. It also explains part of the reason why it's so damn successful as well. Do, do you do it kind of like that? Or is it more of a more of a ad hoc type thing, depending on the situation? It's more ad hoc. I would love to be more disciplined with it. Um, one of my challenges is uh, getting addresses. I don't uh, have addresses for a lot of people. So that's one of my roadblocks. Um, or we could call it a living limiting belief and I could just get over it and find the address. Well, I, I can give you a tip because we do this. We help our clients with this. And it's as, it's as simple as a little text message if you've got their phone number or DM. And it's, you, you just, you say, Hey, it's Ashley. I want to send you something by, by post. What's your, what's your address? And just a quick little message like that. And you're telling them the truth because you're going to, they send you your address. You're going to send them a, a card. Yeah. So it works that pretty well. Simple. All right. Like <laughs> Nothing it. complex about it. Very, very cool, Ashley. All right. So sending out cards, holding the events, any other quick tips that you share with your introverted clients on, on how to get out there and succeed in an extroverted world? My biggest tip is that there are a lot of ways to be out there. Usually for most of my clients, it's the challenge for them isn't where to go and where to meet people. It's how to not burn out while they're doing it. Mm. So my, my biggest tip for them is to be a little more strategic in where you're spending your time and who you're spending it with. And if something is not worth it, just let it go and take it off of your plate and put that time and energy back into the things that are working and the people that you want to spend more time with. Yeah, very, very wise words. Ashley, do you mind if I ask you a, a, a personal question uh, just because this is something that I struggle with? And that is when I'm out at a new networky type thing. Um, I really am not all that great at breaking the ice. What, what do you do if you're plunked in a new place? You don't know very many of the other people there and you don't want to be a wallflower. You want to get out there and mix and mingle. What is your kind of go-to way of breaking the ice with people? Mm. If I don't know anyone, my go-to is to find someone I can compliment. Okay. And usually it's another woman who has a bag or a pair of shoes or something, a hairstyle that I can compliment. I know that sounds weird, but it's like an easy icebreaker. Yeah. Um, if I know somebody, if I know one person in the room, I'm beelining to that person. And I will just, if they're cool with it, we'll work the room together. And sometimes I'll even ask them. I'll say, hey, do you mind if we work the room together? And usually they're fine with it. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, this has been fantastic, Ashley. Thank you so much for sharing some of your hard-earned wisdom and experience about you know, succeeding in an extroverted world when you're more of an introvert. If people want to find out more about you and what you're up to, what should they do? They can find me on my website, moveoverextroverts.com. 
And I also run a Facebook group called Introverts in Real Estate. So very investor friendly, investors welcome. We love it. Wonderful. There you go. I love the name of your website and of your group as well. We'll have that in the show notes. And everybody, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode. Well, hey there. Thanks for tuning into the Property Profits podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes. Give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.